What's up guys, we're back, Recovery Today Magazine, my little section Scummy Unplugged. Today we got the man in black, MTV host, I mean the BMX oh, legend. Keep going, keep One going. of my heroes keep back going. in the day. Keep going, keep going, is I'm that it? Think, that, I'm Mr. Kidding. Rick Thorne, BMX icon legend, the guy does it all. What are you doing, man? <laughs> what, what up, my man? What is going on? Ow! I'm <laughs> a little kidding. bit older these days. <laughs> fragile. So no, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on, dude. Yeah, for man. Sure. So this is, a, I would say, kind of a little bit of a different interview because usually I have guys that come in and they have drug problem, alcoholic, and we talk about their story of how they've overcome addiction because this is Recovery Tay Magazine. Right. You're a little bit different. You never had those problems, but you have been in the spotlight, the industry for so long. And you and me have talked about your story of, you know, drug addiction. Uh, I think some of your family, and I just thought it'd be interesting to have yeah. you come in and hear it from somebody that maybe didn't fall in that hole, but you have enough people around you. You've seen it, you've done it. You never fell in that hole. I don't know how you never fell in the hole. I mean, man, I don't, I mean, I, th I think, I think for me, like just at a, at a, at a young age, maybe I saw like people in my family that were more kind of like drinking a lot, you know, especially drinking and, and not a whole lot more of drugs, but more drinking. Right. Yeah. And I just, it just scarred me, I think, but honestly, man, I, it's more than that. I just feel like I got real lucky because well, I don't even know if I believe in luck, but like riding. You know, and riding always gave me that feeling. But yeah, I've always been around it or been in relationships where like, I felt like I had to like, you know, hey, hey, I'll save you and uh, get off them drugs right there. Yeah. But those girls were attracted to me because of being tattooed, hyper in action sports and the kind of like stereotypical uh, in their minds of like what I was, maybe more like how a lot of people were, but I wasn't, but I was always around that. See, I'm, a, I'm laughing right now because when, you know, we I mean? have to give a little intro, like, what have you done? I know you're BMX, but I'm sure maybe for the people that don't know who you are, and then I want to chime in what I was about to say, but I don't know, like, you've been on the MTV TV show. That's when I first Oh, yeah, saw the you. Sports and Music Festival. I mean, yeah, back in the day, you were like... But we did a Warped Tour together. Yeah, we've done Warped Tour, but, but before that, you've been doing this, like, the front man for TV, uh, early 90s. Yeah, like like well, once once X Games came on like the scene, ninety yeah. like five. But I'd already been hosting shows since like eighty seven, like live shows. Yeah, like yeah. Like car shows and boat shows and state fairs and stuff like that. So I learned how to I, I learned how to host, and so from that, like they needed somebody to help. Like before me on MTV, it was Dan Cortez. I don't know if yeah. you remember that guy. I remember. But he was like, and he was kind of the MTV sports guy. And then it was quiet for a while. So I got my start at MTV. Then I went to ESPN for years. I did radio with them, TV. Then that led to movies. And I went to acting school. And then uh, on top I have, of this, all you're still riding, doing yeah. competitions, traveling the world. So yeah, because most people do TV after their careers in the pits, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm done competing. I don't know what I'm gonna do. For me, I was doing it while I was competing. So I would show up and like host and ride and sometimes I had to do radio. So I was doing like multitasking, being pulled. And I always thought to myself, like I needed to be like very, uh, like here, Yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I think another reason why I have never done drugs is because I'm scared of them. Really? To be honest with you, yeah. Not, not scared of them like I'm afraid of like, oh my God, I'm gonna, what's gonna happen to me? I like to be in control of myself. I don't like to feel like I'm out of control, but more of like, my personality is addictive towards writing and then towards seeking and creating and so you're developing. you're smart enough to realize that you, if you probably went to pills, you're probably going to get addicted to them. See, I don't understand that because when I take pain pills and I party and drinking back in the day and the drugs and everything, it was so rad. It felt so good and like I just didn't want the party to stop ever. I remember coming home from Warp Tour, which we did together. Yep. And I come back to my normal friends and they're going to high school parties and I just I'm like, dude, you guys don't even know. Right. Like and I kept the party going and it was very hard for me to switch that off. And even when you break bones, which you've broken many, you never like the feeling of taking pain pills and No. Really? Even even at forty eight, I'm forty eight and I take no uh, no Tylenol, no Advil, 
Um, not even that. Like I, I don't take any pain pills. I don't wow. nothing. Nothing, bro. I just kind of I learned like how to deal with pain and how to push pain out. And like I keep my mind. Like I I can't 100% say that I know what it's like to, it, it, someone being an addict and like in their mind and how they feel because. I know I'm addicted to bike riding and the things that feeling it gives me. Yeah. Or like singing and creating and I, I have to do that. And I get I get I get I feel my body going, oh, when I haven't been riding for a couple of days, right? I know to go ride, right? Yeah. I f that's why I feel like part of me feels lucky because I found that, but I didn't know that at a young age. I feel like a lot of Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I totally know what you like mean. Like most I, people can find what they're looking for, but then the, I think that the drugs and the drinking and stuff is an easier route. But really, it's 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 a more destructive, longer route to recover from, right? And so, you don't think of that when you're doing it. If people, no. if more people are like you, there wouldn't be a problem. I now. wanted I, out of Missouri, bro. Yeah, I, I wanted out, bro. Like I wanted out. Like I had dreams to be a bike rider back then. There was nothing, and like people, I don't judge, man. But I think a lot of times people have judged me That's by not what I was by say. not partying. They yeah. don't want me around because they think I'm a party pooper. But bro, like I'm cool. Like See, I just so just funny. wasn't my I, thing. I think that's why I have so much respect for you because back in the day I thought you were raging man because you were just hyper tattoos like just your your persona you just know like, hyped on like life, this bro. guy is jacked up man this guy is he's like me but dude I never knew no not even until years we later partying on warp tour I never even knew probably because I was so faded the whole time that I didn't even know you weren't partying no I, I thought you're right with us I didn't start drinking until I was 27 that's crazy yeah and then I didn't even know really know how to drink yeah. And I learned quick that like drinking like at that level quickly, I thought I was riding my bike. Like I could do that. Give me another one. Nah, yeah. let's go for it. Oh, and then I realized real quick that didn't last long. I drank for like six weeks or something and said, okay, wait, hold on. Because it was always about riding. If it affected my riding, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Except for women. Because I've been married three times and especially going and in and out of relationships there were a lot of substance abuse but it mm -hmm. wasn't for me like i said i was trying to because i had a lot of issues with uh that was that was getting in my way of like afraid of being alone and stuff like that you understand what i'm saying I have now i'm that. taking the conversation way over here afraid to be alone self-guilt people pleasing all this is real destructive kind of behavior similar to maybe somebody that's being destructive in a different way with pills or substances not at the same level but it does affect your life and when i figured that out that's when I really started to grow. So my recovery came more from like, not so much pills and booze and, and dope and stuff. It was more like being more of a man and being okay with myself and being alone and it's okay and, and learning about myself. That's what I had to recover from because I kept finding myself in the same type of relationship. This, it was like turning the page over, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it got so exhausting that it would get in the way of me riding. Even though I wasn't wasted, does, does that make sense? 100%. And then overcoming negativity, because I was born in a real negative environment. So riding was always my tool to overcome that negativity. See, I think that's why it's very interesting that you're on this, because I think a lot of people out there can learn a lot. Because if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it, but it's a great way to start, because after I got sober, that's what I tell people. Find something you love. Yeah, man, I you, found running. You, went, you went like, dude, you were already killing it, but like you're everything about you, like just like you went to like next level. All I'm doing is just being sober and just realize you got to help other people. You yeah. got to give back to what you're doing. But I think what you do, you found BMX for other people out there. You just have to find something and put that passion because when you're a drug addict, you put everything into it. Like, right. Everything. Now, is it weird? Like I get a lot of people that are sober. They don't get addicts. Like, why can't you just stop? Do you ever like look at people and like, dude, why don't you just stop? No, I don't because I know I know that it's deeper than that. Maybe in my maybe when I was like, say, you know, my twenties, I'd be like, get over, it, dude, just quit, just go do this, go do yeah. that. But I think that it also is like it's hard to because I think that it's been something that you've been so relying on that it's the easier route to take. Hundred percent. Because see, when you put work into something. <laughs> You think it takes work and people want to cower down quickly and they want the easy route to feel good. I totally get it. But if you want to feel ultimately amazing, put in the hard work and get over to the next level without with, with, with putting in the work. I think a lot of people, and I, I don't know, I can't say a lot of people, but I think some people might not want to put in the work and so they just rely on that acceptance. I, I would say acceptance. 99% of the people. I mean, be, ha, being a full-blown drug addict, 
you put more work into that. I put more work into that than anything. Having to find like, how am I gonna get money to get pills? Just like having all my pills lined up. All right, this is gonna, it, it was a full blown job. And now I just put all my energy to positive shit. And my life is so much easier than what it was yeah. being a drug addict. Well, I, you know, I could see the difference in you through the years too. It's yeah. like, it was like day and night. It's like just a lot easier. You're in a healthy relationship, you run a business. You're, you're doing this show, you're doing some yeah. positive things, you found your thing, or you hit rock bottom. I think sometimes people need to hit rock bottom. I hit my rock bottom, right. 100%. And that's the decision you have to make. Rock bottom either means keep living this way or dying and dying or changing my life. Yeah. And I hit rock bottom with the relationship pattern that I was in. It's like, okay, I need to work on myself. So I, I don't know what it's like for an addict to come off of drugs because I've never done that. But I will say that looking at yourself is difficult. Yeah. And looking at yourself on or off drugs is difficult. And I really dug into myself and looked at myself to change the type of people I attract in my life. And it was uncomfortable at first. I felt like I was coming down off of something. That I was really, truly, honestly facing myself and challenging myself to be better for me. And I think that's what, if you're on drugs, that's what you, you hit a bottom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and you, you, you were a perfect example is that then you got to like, and that's just my analogy of yeah. it. But I, I did see, I mean, and I'm not here to throw my mom under the bus. I love my mother. She went through a lot, but what I'm getting, I'm just a little disclaimer here is my mom drank a lot when I was a kid. Uh, I don't hate her for it. She got divorced. She was stuck with two kids to raise. Uh, her brothers died in car accidents, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I saw drinking as kind of more of a depressed, violent behavior. That, that I feel like scarred me enough to where I would be like, okay, this affected my life so badly that that's what it's like to drink. Yeah. You know, and then I had to like almost, you learn behaviors even if you don't drink. Mm -hmm. And I had to go and, and, and challenge myself to relearn those behaviors on how to deal with your anger and how to vent your anger in a positive way. And I'm like, wait, that's what writing is. Was Maybe a, that's why I was attracted to bike riding. Was it a rough childhood seeing your mom go through that? And yeah, yeah, it was. It was, and it was. It wasn't. It wasn't like as a kid you don't understand because your dad's gone, your mom now she's working in a factory, and me and my sister raising ourselves at night, and you know it was difficult because yeah. it was changing. But as a child you don't know, and as time went on, obviously I get like. But she's she's been sober for years. I mean years, 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 years. That's rad. Yeah, I mean, and she she did it on her own. So my mom's been a perfect example to me of someone that like is challenged and, and is, is, is a, a substance abuser to where you can, can overcome that and to be, Dude, to be a better huge. person. And she did it all. On yeah. Herself. Do you think you feeling like you're alone or your issue was that from your parents getting divorced? It's yeah. weird when you said that, yeah. I, that was my biggest issue in life think like always had to be in a relationship always had to like I was very scared to be alone very scared it abandonment was, uh, issues is what it is I think that's what it was yeah, yeah I went to counseling I never because when I when my parents got divorced I never had any issues I don't know if maybe later down the road it hit me and I still can't pinpoint that but I know that's a real big issue I deal with well maybe that had to deal with like part of doing the drugs too. yeah I don't know never. running 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 from like you know running and we're on the tour and we're running from something because we're afraid, at least for me, I was afraid of being hurt and being abandoned again. So even though I wanted people, like I was afraid to be alone, that I would put up with a bunch of shit mm -hmm. and people please and empty my pockets and et cetera, et cetera, to like not, not be alone. And I didn't even know I was being that way. Yeah. And so finally I was just like, this is bullshit. I can't you do this. Did, were you going to counseling or you did this on your own? No, what I did is I listened. And this is, I, this is something I suggest to anybody. It's pretty, pretty rad. And that's what this is about. Like, People recovery, are, yeah, because me, it was a lot. This is a really good deal. Yeah, it was like recovery in a different way. But like, you could reprogram your brain, whether you believe it or not. You've been taught something, you could unteach yourself. If you haven't been taught something, you could teach yourself. Like, motivation isn't always taught. You learn that. You could teach yourself that. So, in, in, in my case, like, I would listen to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. I, I was openly honest with myself in what, uh, what needed to be done. I figured it out. I'm like, okay. And I went through the steps of, of learning how your brain works and how your subconscious mind works and then how I could reprogram it. And I wow. thought, well, wait, if your subconscious mind never goes to sleep, 
and it gets what you say and what you think, and it doesn't even know you're joking. Like if you go, dude, I'm tired, your subconscious mind hears tired and it takes it, you're tired and makes you more tired. People go, oh, you're nuts. No, it's really a, the power of speech. And so what I would do is I'd say, okay, well, like this book here helps me like not people please. Okay, this book's about that. I would sleep to it, audiobook, because I thought, well, my subconscious mind's listening and never goes to bed. That's why they Crazy. say don't fall asleep in front of the TV, right? So over the course of time, we're talking like time, like like months to year, years. I still do it when I don't when I'm not don't have my kids. I listen to it. like Napoleon Hill's great, and you start to like go, okay, is this really working? And then you go and you, you run into a situation, and that situation pops up in front of you. It's totally different. And for me, it was girls. It was. Yeah. Because I've been single for six years now. I dated for like three months in the last six years. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. Long as my life. But I'm all right. I'm learning that like I'm good. I haven't met that right girl, but I didn't want to keep meeting the girls that, that, that were coming my way. Weren't that like tight. thought I was like party guy, fucking up all night. Like I remember my ex was like, I, I, I got hooked up with you because it'd be three in the morning and you'd be like, let's, I'd go, let's go work on the garden. I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Because <laughs> I was just happy to be around her and like in love and yeah, like yeah, hyped. Yeah. And she thought that I was like on drugs and I was like, no, I'm just like stoked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so the whole time, like we were just, just like, I thought all along, I'm like, no, I was just like, hey, you want to work on the garden at three? Let's do it. You know what I mean? Um, but no, if you, you could reprogram your brain and your mind, um, you should try it. I mean, That's it crazy. It doesn't happen like one time. Like, I went to bed and this didn't work. It's like not one time. I'm going to take like, some notes after this is uh, over and try that. That's something maybe you guys should try. I mean, it's just, it worked for me. and like I've never heard that. It makes sense. Everything you just said, like, fully makes sense, man. Well, I, I just would break your, it down. Your brain's so powerful, man. Like, you just got to tell yourself to do something and do it like every day. I don't want to go to the gym, but I'm telling it, just fucking do it. Like I feel so much better about myself. I'm just channeling my energy into doing positive shit. Everything good in my life is happening. It is, and it's awesome, and you deserve it. And and you know what? It's only going to get better because if you got it, you got it. You know what? What I learned through Esther Hicks, she she writes this this book called uh, uh, Money and the Pursuit of Happiness, uh, or no, Money and the Law. Of, of attraction, money and the law of attraction, yeah. the pursuit of health, wealth, and happiness. Anything is about money, it's like, no, it's not about money. It's not like money make you happy. It's just, it's about vibrations and like telling a new story because it goes back to the subconscious mind. If you keep telling the same story, you're venting to your friend. I used to do it, bro, I did it. Dude, I played the victim for a long time. I didn't realize I was playing a victim. Yeah. I'd be like, can you believe she did this? And then she did that, and then she did this and this, and I did all of this and this. And your, your subconscious mind is listening. It's going to keep giving you the same story because that's what you're seeing. Your perception is the same story. You can turn that, this all around. So tell a new story. Yeah, and you could turn this all around. You're talking about for girls, but it could very well be somebody out there dealing with drugs. Yeah. Turn that around, maybe by audiobooks. Nobody, nobody has an answer to get sober. No. If somebody had an answer, it wouldn't be the biggest right. epidemic going on in the world. So, you know, I mean, what else would you tell somebody that's maybe watching this, they're in a hole, how to get out? Like, what would you tell them? Well, first off, my, my, my issues with, with, in my life were, it was not them. Yeah. It was me because I thought I needed that sickness in order to have them. Which is the same thing you could say, put drugs, you know what I'm it's saying? the same thing. Is, exact same thing. Yeah. So it wasn't them. I'm not a victim. I, I, the way the old me was perfect for those type of girls. Mm -hmm. The new me is like ain't having it because I reprogrammed it. To, to tell anybody out there like the, the, that's a heavy addiction problem to, to like or heavy drinking problem is, I mean, I, I don't know like the right answers, you know, by any means. Like I'm just telling you what worked for me. But I think the first would just be like, really like be honest with yourself and, and get literature and like, and like, I mean, I know there's meetings, you got NA, you got AA, and I've been to those meetings, Yeah. okay? And those help out a lot. But don't even, just don't read it or go to an AA meeting, actually apply it. But maybe try something different that you haven't done before, you know, um, to, to find that thing that you really like to do. Yeah. To, to like, 
Because I think, do you, do you think that people that are addicts also too are like kind of like obsessive compulsive maybe? 100%, a lot of them. Right, so, so with that obsessive compulsive behavior to divert that into something more uh, that's positive in positive. your life. Positive. But I mean, it it's easy for me to sit here and say that because- But I, I say the same thing. Find what, you know find what I mean? something. For me, I was never a runner. I've said this a couple times. I started running and I tell people, just run. I mean, when you're done, you feel good. It should Running's channel good. your energy. I mean, whatever. I still ride dirt bikes, mountain bikes. I do everything. But for me, that was something. Just channeling that energy I had to drugs into this. Do it every day. Just you got to find something. And it might love. be it might be more of a psychological issue too. Of like, there's something in your life that's happened to you. Yeah. To make you feel a certain way, and that's clearing yourself in a way. To be honest with yourself, I I strongly suggest anybody out there struggling with anything that if you that help helps to reprogram. You know, like I said, that worked for me is is really listening to audiobooks because I, I kind of tend to drift with reading. If I read, you know, uh, my mind starts yeah. to kind of wander. But if I'm asleep, I felt like okay, I, I'm isolated. My subconscious is listening. I can't go anywhere. You know what I mean? And I'll wake up and my phone will still be going. You know what I mean? That's crazy. But I've seen it happen with my mom. My mom, she stopped drinking because she made the decision. And I think that that's the main thing is making the decision. And I think that she had probably hit rock bottom. And she had to make a decision in her life. And um, um, hopefully not for people that they don't find themselves in a situation where someone's hurt or they hurt themselves yeah. to make that decision. But unfortunately, that happens a lot of times. It's to catch it before you get to that level. Yeah. You know, before you're actually, you know, Rock. slammed. And then you're like, oh, shit, now I should change this. And a you lot know? of people don't wake up from that slam. It's overdose. I mean, right. a lot of people don't get that luxury of changing. So, yeah, it's a destructive path. Man, this was a rad interview. We have to... Hopefully I helped. You, I and do, I don't have the answers for anything. I'm sitting back. I, I'm almost forgetting that we're even getting videoed. I mean, I don't, yeah, I'm just telling you what worked for me. And like, and like I said, everybody you know, has a different cure. I yeah. learned a lot. I want to take some notes about this audiobook. I think it's rad. All your Instagram, social media will be in this article. Rick Thorne is a legend. Let's go high five. He's a lot of high times five for you. They were like, you go handshake, then they this like another grab one. This on, another one. And they <laughs> like, it gets awkward. Yeah, you so like, yeah. Double high five. But just remember this, you get, okay, well, you get what you think and say most. I got to Like, okay, real now. quick, and I'll shut up. This girl, she's <laughs> like, She's getting an elevator, right? I lived in this apartment and she's like, I said, hey, how you doing, you know? And she's like, oh, I think I'm getting sick. Two days later, she was sick because her subconscious mind heard she's getting sick. If she, that's what I'm saying, tell a different story. It's really that simple. Whether you know it or not, you told yourself a different story of what you really wanted in life and you're getting it now. I'm not, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna do something Tell new you. and I'm gonna do power this audio of speech. Book. It's the power of speech, dude, I'm telling you. I love it, man. All right. You guys heard it, man in black. Let's go one more high five and then we're out. Scummy Unplugged, Rick Thorne, we are out. Out of here. Done.